Do you believe in aliens? Do you believe that time can be altered for each of us? It could be a mother picking up her child from daycare, only to find out that she has lost several hours of her life without knowing what happened. It could be a father who is on a lunch break, only to find out that they lost several additional minutes without knowing what happened. It could be you, as you are watching this video. One moment you are listening to me doing this introduction, only to find yourself realizing that the video is over and you don't know what happened. My name is Jeff, aka Geekers, and welcome to another installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries, the case of Robert Matthews, also known as Missing Time. This case first aired on the November 30th, 1988 episode of Unsolved Mysteries. This is one of the cases that I tend to remember very fondly because uh, it fell in that time of Unsolved Mysteries where the filming uh, style was very gritty, the audio was raw, it just had that very basic look and feel to the case, uh, that uh, to the video that basically followed uh, Unsolved Mysteries for the first few seasons before they started to uh, really get the money from NBC uh, that helped them uh, better their production value. Before we can get to the meat of this video, I thought I would give you guys the results of a, a poll that I uh, that I held for everybody to pick the possible uh, thumbnail for this video. And the results were actually, the, the turnout was actually higher than what I thought it was going to be. As you can see here, I actually had 11 people vote, which I want to say thank you to all, all 11 of you who have voted. It, you know, it shows that my show is actually getting a little bit of traction. So the, the choices that everybody had was uh, you could go with the default thumbnail, which 18% of people voted for. Uh, this The next thumbnail option was the introduction of Robert Matthews. That pulled in 45%. The uh, next uh, option was the an image of an alien that Robert Matthews saw that he talked about during his uh, hypnosis or hyp hypnosis session. I think that's what it's called. That pulled in nine percent, and then finally we had Robert Stack at the observatory. That pulled in twenty seven percent. Hold on, let me. There you go. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who has voted in this contest to see what the thumbnail is going to be. So uh, when I upload this, I will be going with the Robert Matthews introduction uh, thumbnail. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who has voted. And I will have another one, in the, another contest like this up when I get done with this case. So with that said and out of the way, let's turn this off. As always, wait. That wrong button sorry as always if you like what you watch which i hope that you are and you want to learn more about missing time ladies and gentlemen feel free to click that subscribe button click the bell and the like and you will be alerted when i release new content now before i get to that it is time for our first uh commercial i hope you like commercials from the 1970s because these commercials are going to be uh they originally aired on december 31st 1978 so basically new year's eve ladies and gentlemen 1978 is where we're going i will be right back channel 7 wishes you the happiest of new year welcome back ladies and gentlemen i hope you're all having a great start to your morning it is about 10 36 a.m on the 5th of october at 2024 as i'm recording this if you are new to this series basically this is where i go to the unsolved mysteries wiki and my lovely assistant her name is jasmine she will be reading to us this case and i may uh you know give you my thoughts as she reads on you know so you can hear what i have to say but yeah so uh as always the little a little warning i have to feel that i have to do is that this program that i use to to read the uh to read this uh hold on do this and then this that I read uh have read the wiki it isn't always the most stable of program so I may have to kind of read along also sometimes but 
let me get my Bluetooth on because I forgot to do that. I always tend to forget to put these things on. You would think after doing over, I think it's over like 40 of these videos now, I would remember to get my Bluetooth on, but I, I, I keep, I keep forgetting. Okay, so let me make sure that everything is, all, okay, it's all good here. There we go. And just so you guys know, while Jasmine's going to be reading to us, I'm going to be enjoying some uh, a and root beer. It's not a plug or anything. I just, I had this in the kitchen for a while, so I thought, you know what, might as well have some fun. So basically, here's to you guys. Yeah. Okay, so I will start with this uh with the the introduction here so his real name is robert matthews the case is unknown phenomenon the date was october the 1st 1966 the uh, location was was north true true row kick cod in massachusetts now just so everybody knows that even though uh, Robert Matthews is the primary person of this case. There's a couple other cases that's uh, part of this, if I remember correctly. In the video, they have like a total of three different cases, but Robert Matthews was the uh, was like the main focus. I'm not sure if those uh, smaller cases are actually part of this wiki or if they're part of a spinoff. If they're part of a spinoff where they, where they have other wiki uh, other wiki entries i'm not really going to cover them today i'm just focusing on robert matthews since he was like the main star of this case so let's scroll up okay let's see how this works let's see how this works ladies and gentlemen let's actually just make sure that it's updated because i always have a feeling okay it's updated i always have a feeling that maybe it could be an update that could fix it you know but let, let, let's go let's go i know i'm talking i'm talking uh Come on, please. Are you light seen by Robert? Okay, apparently I'm gonna have to start right off because it is not going to read it at all today. Okay, so uh, twenty-year-old first-class airman Robert Matthews was preparing for his first tour of duty. At a nearby outpost, he arrived by bus in front of Dutra's Market, now called Salty Market, in North Truro in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, at 8.45 p.m. on October the 1st, 1966, and noticed that the place was deserted. He called the base, and they told him that they would send a truck to pick him up. He claims that he, while standing there, he saw strange lights moving from right to left across the sky. He felt a great amount of fear while seeing those lights. Now, when I was younger, I remember when I watched this case with my mom, and, and I'll be honest, when especially when I was that young, I thought what I was actually watching was like the, the actual thing that was happening right then. And I think it really helped with that, with that, What's, with that illusion, I guess you could say. It helped with that illusion because the filming style and the audio, it was just so gritty. So I couldn't help but think, oh my God, he's being abducted right on television. And you can't say that you didn't think about that because other people, uh, I've saw, uh, I love the 80s, and people actually thought when they were younger that the crimes that they were watching on TV at that point were the actual crimes. So I actually thought I was about to watch uh, Robert Matthews get abducted. Okay, let's scroll down. Okay, I'm going to try a smaller batch. Uh, let's just go uh, down to here. Maybe maybe since we're approaching this thing here, the, the caption for the picture may work better this time. So let's try this. Come on, please. Robert ran back to the yes. phone and called the base back. They asked him where he had been, and even though he thought he was there the entire time, they said that they had sent a truck down there five minutes after the first call, but when they went by, he wasn't there. Can you imagine what it would be like you were going somewhere only to, uh, 
only to find out that, like, you thought that, like, say if I was walking to the grocery store across the street, it's like a five minute walk at, at the most, depending on traffic. I leave at 9.45 p.m. to go get a gallon of milk, per se. When I'm walking up to the front of the store, it's already after midnight. Could you imagine how disorientating that would be? That would be. I would lose my mind if that happened to me. It's like, what the fuck? I live, literally live like 400 feet away from this grocery store. It's like, what the hell happened? So I, you know, it's never happened to me, but I could under, you know, I could understand how disorientating Robert Matthews would have been. Okay, let's try this. Come on. We're, 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 we're one for one right now. So, or, or like, yeah, we're one for two or whatever. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Nearly an hour later at 9.45 p.m. is when he called them back, even though in his mind, the calls appeared to be only four minutes apart. When he arrived at the post, he was questioned by several military men in civilian clothes, and he continued to tell the story that he was at the market, and they began asking him about the strange object in the sky. They believed that he was lying and may have been drinking, but he denied this and insisted that his story was true. He would eventually serve in Vietnam, but never forgot his strange incident in Cape Cod. Well, if they thought that he was drinking, wouldn't they have been able to smell it on the guy? It was only like an hour since he disappeared. You know, you, you can't get over the effects of alcohol that quick. Uh, that you know, I never really drank. The last dr uh, last drink I actually had was for my twenty first birthday, but I'm pretty sure you can't get over being drunk. In one hour. I don't think it works like that. I think it has to work through you for a little bit. Okay. Okay, come on. We're, we're, we got a little bit of a streak here going. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Please. Please. Robert Matthews ah. on Unsolved.com. Ah, so close. So close. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think, however, the, wait, hold on, what's this? What's this, this? Oh, yeah. Okay. However, this was not the only UFO encounter that Robert had in his life. When he was about five or six years old, he saw a green glowing figure in his bedroom and tried to scream. But nothing came out. He lost his voice and hearing. Ooh, that. Uh, then. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had a package from Walmart show up. So that's going to go over here. Okay, so let's see. Where did I leave off? Uh, he lost his voice and hearing. And then all of a sudden it came toward him. Lifted up his pajamas and did something to his chest. But when he told his mother, she didn't believe him. That would have to be the worst thing I could ever imagine happening. You know, like, something happening to us. And you tell a loved one that this thing happened. And they don't believe you. That, to me, that is the worst thing that I think could ever happen to somebody. Okay, so let, let's see here. Let, let's go down. Let's try this. Come on, come on. Wait, hold on. Okay, come on. Come on. You you can do it. Come on. Come on, Jasmine. Everybody, let's go. Come on, Jasmine. Let's go. <laughs> come on. Robert Matthews on unsolved.com. Oh my god, it is literally not working with me today. Okay. Uh okay, so I'm guessing I'm guessing I'm gonna have to read because Jasmine, she is just not in the mood to help us today. Anyway, years later, in 1987. When he found a book by Bud Hopkins, a UFO researcher, about a phenomenon called missing time and became certain uh, that it had happened to him. He also saw a picture on the cover and was certain that that was one, uh, the one he saw in his bedroom when he was a child. He then went under hypnosis and described uh, what he had been, uh, that he, wait, Described that he had been abducted by aliens and that they had probed him. Okay. Yeah, that... We we always... Nowadays, we kind of, you know, kind of like, yeah, yeah, you're abducted, yeah. You know, he, he, they even kind of uh, made a little bit of light about it on the earlier seasons of uh, South Park. 
but you you know i i feel for this guy you know like yeah it's kind of funny like the way south park made it look but you got to think about the terror that was going through this poor guy's uh through through his mind and everything like what was happening to him and then the fact that he was a child when this was happening and then he goes to try to tell his mom and the and the lady didn't listen to the poor kid i would be I'd be upset if I was you, to be honest. I'd be like, I'm telling you this shit is happening, and why are you listening to me? You know, like several other people have experienced this activity. New York choreographer Christi Christina Florence claims that she had numerous experiences of missing time uh, and alien abduction. However, many wonder if these stories about uh, story these stories. Of missing time are true. Bud believes that the reason is reproduction. Oh, oh, about what they're doing to the people. An ongoing genetic experiment done by the aliens. Susan Fox, a psychologist who studied the phenomenon, learned from several people who experienced uh, it that several complications have all uh, have occurred with their reproductive organs. Excuse me, one second. Uh, which may have been a result of the experiments. Okay, let me take a quick drink here. Suspects. Okay, hold on, let me see. Okay, so we don't have that much longer. Okay. Let's see if we can try. It. Let, let, come on, we, we gotta get at least a, one good, re one more good reading. Come on, Jasmine. Come on. T.S. Okay, it is on. believed the phenomenon is linked to UFO activity. Bud began receiving letters from people who had UFO sightings and about missing time, and he later wrote two books about it: Intruders and Missing Time. He is certain, based on all of the evidence from the cases, that it is real, but hopes that one day, it will stop because of the problems that have happened to the people. He believes that a scientific investigation needs to be done about it. He has researched several cases about missing time and has investigated both Robert and Christina C. Uh, their cases. Uh, my mom, before she actually passed away, she actually had both of those books, Intruders and missing time she loved those books she that's when she found out about bud hopkins being on uh unsolved mysteries she went nuts because she was such a fan of his books okay so uh so but they uh you know they uh they were they investigated both robert and christina's cases okay let's uh, let's go down to here. Come on, please. Robert Matthews uh, on unsolved.com. Yep. Okay, I kind of had a feeling that it wasn't going to work. Okay, so he and Robert hypnotized. Uh, he, oh, sorry, he had. Robert hypnotized to see if he could remember what happened in October 1968. And he, under hypnosis, told about uh, three lights in the sky that hovered around, and then a red light went straight toward him. He then saw a light come out of it, and he walked up a ramp, looked inside, and saw three beings inside, uh, and what looked like a doctor's office. They uh, looked at his chest, took samples from his body, and probed him. After his hypnosis, he was able to return to Cape Cod and explain what happened uh, where it had appeared. Christina also went into hypnosis in order to find out more about what happened. Okay, so extra notes. This case first aired on the November 30th, 1988 episode. Results unsolved. And that is about it. So I'm just going to I'm I'm gonna to go to the uh 
other uh, profile. Just do a quick search. Just to do a quick, just to see what it quickly looks like, you know. Okay, so we have Christina Florence, Christina Florence, unusual phenomena. The location is Barstow, California. The date was 1974. And basically, it talks about. Uh, I guess I could actually read this since I got a little bit of time, I guess. Okay, so details in. Okay, New York choreographer Christina Florence claims that she has had numerous experiences of missing time and alien abduction. Her story begins in the Mojave Desert. In 1974, when she was 17 and driving with her mother and sister in San Francisco. On the way there, their car overheated next to a park in Barstow. And their mother went to get water for the radiator. At some point, Christina's sister got out. She walked around the back and she yelled, Oh my God, come out here quick. Hold on one second. The next thing that Christina remembered consci uh, consciously was uh, her and her sister lying on a blanket in the park. And then the next thing she remembered after that they after that was that their that they and their mother back in the car driving away extremely fast. A few years later, her sister called her. And they talked about it before getting in contact with Bud Hopkins in 1986. She agreed to go under hypnosis uh, to find out what happened to her and her sister. Through it, she realized that aliens had abducted them and that they were examined by them. This case is somewhat similar to that of Robert Matthews, who believes that he was abducted by aliens during a period a missing time in 1966. Hold on one second, please. But okay, so suspects. Bud Hopkins believes that Christina was abducted by aliens during her missing time experience. She went under hypnosis in order to find out more about what happened. She claimed that she and her sister looked up when they got out of the car and saw something. They got back in and it wouldn't start. The next thing she remembered was that she was on a table with weird beings standing around her. She saw a paper screen uh, which was moving around, moving around it and uh, kept taking pictures of her. It really sounds like the kind of monitors that we now use nowadays for like our televisions or our computers, you know. Okay, so uh let's see here. Let's see, can we go down to here? Well, let's just go down here. See see if this works. Come on. Come on. Around her was a round room filled with dials. She claims that they put some weird rubber pants on her and then left. After which, she started asking for her sister. They said she was okay. That was the last thing she remembered through hypnosis. The next thing she remembered was that she and her sister were back on the ground. Susan Fox, a psychologist, is certain that she is legitimate and that her story is completely true. It seems to be too, uh, too fanciful for it not to be true so i i tend to believe that this case is actually pretty true uh in the comments section below guys what do you think do you think that the do you think that, that missing time is a legitimate phenomenon or do you think that this is missing time is just something that is concocted by people who basically wants like 15 minutes of fame okay so uh extra notes this case first aired on the november 30th 1988 episode this was actually part of the whole missing time case that Robert Matthews was part of. Results, unsolved, links, and here they are. And that is about it. So I want to say thank you to Jasmine for joining us. And I'll do this, and then this, there we go. So that was the case viewing of Robert Matthews. We even got uh, another case in of Christina Florence also. 
But basically, the, the main the main uh, star of this installment was our friend Robert Matthews. So I'm going to take a quick break, and after these commercials, I will be right back with my final thoughts. Okay, it is now time for the final thoughts, and we have a case that is a real humdinger, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, I use the word humdinger, and why did I use the word humdinger? I don't know, but I felt that it was... I, I felt that it was a good uh, good description for this case. It's a humdinger. We, it's a big one, ladies and gentlemen. We, you know, I can understand from both sides uh, people who would believe that missing time exists, and then there are people who hear missing time and think, oh, funny, haha, aliens probed, anal satellites, you know, stuff that has been kind of satirized via shows like Soft Park, you know. So I can understand why people, you know, are on both sides. You know, there are those who believe it, and then there are those who do not believe it. I'll, I'm in the, I'm on the side that likes to believe that it's possible. I refuse to believe that we are the only intelligent species out there in the, in this big, uh, chasm of the universe. Yeah. You know? But honestly, with all that said, some, some scary, horrible shit has happened to these people. And if anything, these people deserve to have the answers that they that they want, that they deserve. You know, they 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 were forced to undergo some experiments that nobody should be forced to go under without permission. Would you like it if you were laying in bed and all of a sudden some people came in or some beings came in and they basically you know abused you? Would you like that? I sure as hell wouldn't. I sure as hell would not like it. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't like it either. So that's why I say that these people, Bud Matthews, not Bud Matthews, Robert Matthews and uh, Christina Florence, they deserve to have some answers provided. Yeah. But yeah, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We had a couple cases of, you know, some mysterious phenomenon, ladies and gentlemen. But before I back out, before I back out, let's do this. Let's do this. I forgot there was one other poll I held, and three people responded to it. Uh, I asked the question in the uh, previous case. Well, I didn't ask the question, but this poll is about the previous case. It was it was regarded the uh, the death of Charlie Sigmund. Charlie Sigmund was shot seven times. And I asked all of you awesome people out there, was this a case of murder or was it a case of self-defense? And the results are in, ladies and gentlemen. As of 11.04 a.m. on the 5th of October, as I'm recording this, uh, we have 33% of the view of the people who replied. They said that they feel that it was murder and 67 percent of the people said that it was self-defense so this is something that you know we each have to kind of think about you know was it murder was it self-defense you know but yeah so with that out of the way so next installment of black site files of unsolved mysteries we have the sad story of rogers kane uh, Rogers Kane, he is basically somebody who had a very... Here, let me move this up a little bit. There you go, so you can see him. Uh, Rogers Kane was a very reliable person. He was a hard worker. And he never really caused... He never rocked the boat. And because of that, people really don't notice when hardworking, loyal employees like that just disappear. And that's actually what sadly happened to Rogers Kane. It is believed that Rogers had a stroke and that he ended up having, uh, like, uh, memory impairment issues. And because of that, they think that he was lost out there in the world somewhere. Uh, it's sad to say that we are approaching his 100th birthday in, uh, in just about seven days and and i i don't like to be a negative nanny is that the right or negative nancy or whatever you call it negative nelly negative nelly that's what it is but i hate to say it 
I personally do not feel that Ra just is alive. I think he may have passed away shortly after uh shortly after he disappeared. But we are gonna be learning more about uh Rogers Kane on the next installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. I just want to say thank you to everybody who has watched this installment. It means a lot to me. And as always, if you like what you are watching, which I hope that you did, feel free to click that subscribe button. You will be alerted when I release new content. And that is about it. So, my name is Jeff, a.k.a. Jeekers. I'm wishing you all the greatest of weekends. And I will see you for the next installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. Peace out, everybody. Monday on AM, hairstylist Alan Edwards previews the latest looks for your man. Sports writer Lisa Morrow makes her football bowl predictions. Actor Hardy Kruger takes us behind the scenes of his latest movie, The Wild Geese. And Dr. Edmund Hallberg explains why men fool around when they reach that male metaphor's age. All of that, Monday at 9 here on AM Los Angeles.